introducing from the Virgin Islands and New York City, wearing black trunks, weighing 144, the challenger. The timekeeper, George Bannon, counting for the knockdowns, Johnny Colan, and your referee for the main event, Ruby Goldstein. Is there any question of the your mind? I have a sponsor to I will be waiting for I will be waiting for Because this is a championship fight, you know we are waving the three knockdowns in one round. We are waving the mandatory eight pounds. Benny Kid Perret speaks very, very little English, but his manager, Manny Alfaro, speaks both Spanish and English. Of course, Emil Griffith speaks good English. The scoring here in New York is on a rounds basis with a supplementary point system if the rounds come out uh, even on an official's card. And as Ruby has told you, there will be no three knockdown rule, no automatic eight count. Round one, scheduled for 15. Griffith on the black trunks, red and white. The third meeting of the two, they've each won one. Wallaway Championship at stake. Close around the ringside here are very much surprised at the low weight which Griffith came in at, 144. He was 147 for their last title bout in September. Then he kid for seems to be on the In his training, Griffith emphasized a, a quick sneak right hand. He just got one over, as you notice. Perez, a bouncy fighter. Perez usually fights better when hurt or when he's backed against the ropes. Perez apparently trying to slow down Griffith, the faster of the two. Perez is working the body. tonight with six ounce gloves, championship style. Seconds to go in round one.
is the bell. Round two of a 15-rounder for the Wellaway Championship. Benny Kid for red in the white trunks. He's the champion. Emil Griffith in the black is the challenger. Ruby Goldstein, the referee. on the inside and Ruby cautions him against it. a minute left in round two. a little over anxious. Perrette knows that and is trying to make him miss and counter. <laughs> Griffith's maneuver didn't work to his satisfaction that time. Perrette spun him. <laughs> Judging from what we've seen so far, it looks as though Griffith is trying for a quick knockout and Perrette hoping to win on a decision as he did the last time. There's the bell ending round two. Naturally, Perret will take a, a knockout if he can score one. In the corner of uh, the champion is Johnny Sulo on the left-hand side. Behind the fighter, just not in the ropes, but leaning on the post there is his manager, Manny Alfaro. Facing him is uh, one of his trainers, Jose Terrera, and on the outside is Joe De Maria. There are four men in the corner of the champion. Meanwhile, on the challenger side of the ring, we have the ever-faithful three who have been with Emil Griffith throughout his career. Facing him is co-manager Gil Clancy, leaning in from the right-hand side with the glasses, the milliner, Howard Albert, and uh, the uh, very experienced and true handler of fighters. He's out of the picture now. You can see his towel. Sid Martin is also in the picture. Coming up to round three, Benny Kid Perrette on his feet, wearing the white trunks. Emil Griffith still seated in black trunks. Scheduled for 15. Coming up to round three, Benny Kid Perrette on his feet, wearing the white trunks. Emil Griffith still seated in black trunks. Scheduled for 15. Ruby Goldstein.
a uh, laceration, a light one, below the right eye of Benny Kid Perez. He slipped as he delivered a punch that time. Now they're in Perez's corner. to wonder about the fight that Perrette had with Fulmer last December when he was knocked out in 10 rounds. One minute to go in round three, you wonder just how much that fight might have taken out of Perrette. But maybe it didn't take anything out of it. Fulmer knocked him out, you know. Griffith has scored heavily in this round. He won't let Perrette out of that trap. Seconds to go in round three. There's the bell. Round four coming up at Madison Square Garden. Emil Griffith, the Black Trunks, the challenger. Benny Kid Perrette in white, the welterweight champion. Ruby Goldstein refereeing. Griffith had a pretty big round, the third round. below the right eye. It's on the cheekbone. Nothing alarming at the moment. Perret seems to be in trouble, but it, he's a deceiving type fighter. Round four almost over. There's a bell ending round four. It was another good one. Uh, incidentally, last
last night, yours truly was the honorary referee at the Bengal bouts on the University of Notre Dame campus, attended by about 5,000 of the students. I want to thank one and all for their hospitality and the way they treated me out there last night. Here's something of interest to all sports fans. Saturday is sports day on ABC. The best in boxing and the best in bowling both afternoon and night. Make that spare follows the fight. Next Saturday, the professional bowlers tour visits San Antonio, Texas for the Yoke Hills Open starting at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tomorrow, ABC's Wide World of Sports features the NCAA Basketball Championship game from Freedom Hall, Louisville, Kentucky between Ohio State and the Cincinnati Bearcats. A rematch of last year's title game. That that's tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over ABC, America's number one network for sports. The bell for round five. Benny Kid Perrette, the Wellaway champion, White Trunks, Emil Griffith, the challenger in black. Perrette, 146 and a quarter, Griffith, 144. Wellaway limit, 147. champion Benny Kidd for red and white, Emil Griffith the challenger in black. Scheduled for 15.
Griffith, who was slugging last round, is boxing in this round. for the challenger that the round was almost over and unfortunate for the champion Benny Kid Perrette. It's quite possible that if there had been another minute or so to go, Perrette might have scored a knockout. Griffith has never been knocked out, but he seemed to be out on his feet. They gave him the smelling salts. Gil Clancy trying to calm him down. They'll probably tell him to stay away. Here comes round seven. Boy, that changed things around in a hurry. Perrette is pretty tired himself. Now, let's see. Round seven. Perrette in the white trunks. Griffith in the black. I believe that's the first time Griffith has ever been down. I'm not sure he has recovered from the effects of that punch yet. Griffith looks over at his corner. Now it's Perrett trying for the knockout, and Griffith trying to stay in there and clear away the cobwebs.
they're both very, very tired at this point. You wonder how strong Griffith can be at 144 pounds. Griffith was waddled again. Ten seconds to go in round seven. There's the bell. Coming up to round eight of an exciting Wallaway Championship out of Madison Square Garden. Benny Kid Perrette, the champion in white trunks. Emil Griffith in black. Griffith was down for about a seven or eight count at the end of the sixth round, and both boys were staggered in the seventh. been advised by John Condon, the publicity director of the Garden, that Griffith was down once before in his eighth fight and got up to knock his opponent out. Two title bouts coming up, April 7th, Terry Downs and Paul Pender for the middleweight title in Boston. Boston blacked out. April 21st, Joe Brown defends the lightweight title against Carlos Ortiz in Las Vegas. Las Vegas blacked out. Fight of the week takes place here at Madison Square Garden. A 10 round middleweight bout between Top Can America's largest selling quality cigar. Round nine, Benny Perrette, the champion in white trunks. Emil Griffith, the challenger in black. The Wellaway title, title at stake. And the issue in doubt at this moment. It's scheduled for 15 rounds.
Smith was down with about 15 seconds to go in the sixth round. Only not down in the fight. Griffith, however, seemed to have built up an early lead. And the scoring is on a round basis, so round six is just one round out of the many if it goes 15. to round 10 of a 15-rounder for the welterweight championship. Emil Griffith, the challenge of the black trunks. Benny Kid Perret, the champion in white. Will be Goldstein warning Perret about an infraction. Perret is bleeding from the nose. He has scored the only knockdown of the fight, putting Griffith down in the sixth round, or seven or eight. minutes left in this round. could punch himself out. A minute to go on the round. Trevor looking to shoot that overhand right again. Half a minute to go on the round. Round 
it almost out. If Griffith can turn around and sit down in a moment. There's the bell. Let's go back to the corner with Perrette and see how things are over there. It was rough going for the champion in round uh, 10. He had rough going in, in uh, round five and uh, round three and round one. But he uh, scored a knockdown in the sixth round that almost won the fight for him. But he was unfortunate that there wasn't very much time left before the bell. Benny Kid Perrette with four of his handlers, including his manager, Manny Alfaro. On the other side of the ring, Gil Clancy, the co-manager of uh, Emil Griffith is keeping up a steady stream of advice. I don't know if you can hear it. There's Gil. He's putting on a real show in there. He wants this one big. Listen to him. After that, Griffith will be happy to get back in the center of the ring with Perrette. Here's round 11. A 15 round of Perrette and white trunks, Griffith and black. at least in the early part of this round. Griffith looking for a big opening. to round 12. Perrette the champion, white trunks, Griffith and black, in case you joined us late. Griffith probably built up an early lead, that's our unofficial opinion, and then Perrette almost knocked him out at the end of the sixth round. Since then, it's been kind of nip and tuck. Ruby Goldstein, the referee.
they seem to be pacing themselves for what might be a furious finish. Two minutes left in this round. champion is Emil Griffith, but we're more concerned about the condition of uh, Benny Kit Perret than we are about the title at the moment. Uh, we're going to have an interview with the winner. The time is 2.09 of this round. We'll have an interview with uh, Emil Griffith as sure as uh, as soon as we find out how Benny Kit Perret is. The time, two minutes and nine seconds. Of the 12th round, the winner by a knockout, and once again, welterweight champion of the world, Abel Griffith. Griffith being announced as the welterweight champion. Charlie Hart. However, the story right now is Benny Kid Perret, as Griffith comes over to console with him, and Dr. Schiff works over him. Perret is stretched out in the corner just above us in a neutral corner. Dr. Alex and the shift is working over him. Dr. Shift, the commission doctor. Benny went down not from any one punch, but from an accumulation of punches. The gloves have been taken off him by Johnny Sula, one of his handlers. Then he has his eyes open now. Manny Alfaro, his manager, is talking to him. And that's Jose Terrera applying the water to him. Dr. Schiff says, let him alone. He'll probably be all right. No cause for excitement. Meanwhile, there are the happy handlers of Emil Griffith. Gil Clancy, his arm around him, and the other two. They are probably going to take uh, Perrette out on a stretcher. Dr. Kleinman is also in the ring. <clears throat> Benny is being placed on a stretcher. Dr. Schiff taking another look at him there. I'll say this, they don't come any gamer than Perret. The crowd is applauding Perrette, a well-deserved tribute to a, a game little battler. Yeah. 
We will have an interview with Emil Griffith as soon as uh, things are clarified. We'll interview the winner, Emil Griffith, and also bring a videotape playback of the knockout in just a minute. Remember, ABC every Saturday night for the fight of the week. Have you tried the new Gillette Super Blue Plate? No. What's it like? Nine cents or 15 for a dollar. Here is Emil Griffith, the uh, young man who has just regained the welterweight championship in an exciting fight with uh, Benny Kid Perret, whom he dethroned. And now uh, I want to congratulate you, Emil, but because we're all holding our breath a little bit to see how Benny Kid Perret is. Thank you very much, John. I'm very proud to be the welterweight champion again. And I hope Perret is, is uh, feeling very good, which they won't let tell me how he feels. Uh, Benny, uh, rather, Emil, I want you to take a look at our screen here, and we're going to replay the knockout in uh, slow motion videotape, and I'd like you to just sort of describe what happened, if you can remember. It was very exciting. It'll go there in just a moment now. It was very exciting. It'll go there in just a moment now. There it is. You want to see describe what's him happening? You, you want to get a little closer? What you doing? You're moving around. Well, I was moving away from him. I was trying to jab him away. I heard him in the last few describe rounds. what you see there, man. That's what you're going to describe. What you see in front of you. What you're doing right there. Hey, what are you doing there? Ruby Goldstein's getting out of a clinch. Well, I was punching more there. Perret seems all right for the moment. Yes. I guess you're about to work him over to the ropes, aren't you? Yes. I was um, trying to work to the body. Now here, now here you have him on the ropes. Now let's see what happens. Was it any one punch, do you remember? No, it was a series of punches done it and I was in the corner. After I heard it, he went through the rope and I kept on punching. Hardy is still a tough uh, Oh, he's opponent. a tough fighter. He never lets up, to tell you the truth. Takes a lot longer in slow motion, doesn't it? Oh yes. But as you see, he kept on coming at me, and he was always a faint. I'll actually drop his right hand first before he starts to punch. And you, Joe Clancy, always have to wake me up. I guess he keep on telling me, "Come on, got to work, fight in there. I have to win every round." He told me. Well, it could have been close. This may be near it now, Emil. Are you trying to lure him into an opening there? Yes, I was trying to get him to move, come to me. When he, he rushes at me, he don't know what to do when I step back. Yeah, I think you hurt him with that right hand. You hurt him a little bit right here. Takes a long time in slow motion, Don. This is real slow motion. Oh, yes. Before you go, I want to ask you about when he knocked you down the sixth round. Here it's coming now. Yeah, there it is. One punch and hurt. That did it. That did it. That's over now. He's hurt now, see? No, not so over. Right there, I heard him um, right there, and then I was punching his side. He told me whenever I punch, I must step back and get him in a. Uh, that's beautiful camera work, isn't it? Yeah, there is. Do anything like that. There it is. Eight. Yes, sir. No, sir. And that's just about it, Amo. I keep on punching. Uh, the little bit um, uh, furious when I see didn't go down, and I tried to get him again, but the referee pulled me back. It was uh, He's a good fighter. Player. He's a good game fighter. Now, yes, what happened yes. in the sixth round when he knocked you down? I thought you'd build up an early lead. Uh, you ran into one. But in the, in the fourth round, the sixth, sixth round, round. Sixth round, over in your own corner, it was near the yeah, bell. In the sixth round, when he hit me, I was 
going into him. He caught me, rushed into him, he hit me a uh, flush punch. He you stopped. didn't seem to know where you were when you got up. Yes, I knew when I got up because uh, when I got up, I got right up at the count of eight. And then the bell rang and he rushed into me. So when he rushed into me, I clinched him and try and pull myself together. Okay, thank you very much, Gil thank Clancy, much, and good luck to you. Uh, Emil Griffith, Gil Clancy, Sid Martin, you, Howie Thanks, Albert. Thanks, uh, good luck, Emil. Thank we'll you. Be you soon again. To all my, I want to say hello to all my friends at the... Uh, at the uh, Concord, at the Concord Hotel. Okay, all yeah, my wonderful friends are very happy very for nice. you. They were wonderful. Good. That was Emil Griffith, who has just regained the welterweight championship of the world. Remember ABC every Saturday night for the fight of the week. Well, the ring has been cleared at Madison Square Garden. And of course, now you know the result. Emil Griffith, formerly of the Virgin Islands, now of New York City, defeated Benny Kid Perret uh, for the welterweight championship of the world. Uh, Griffith had knocked out Perret in 13 rounds last April. Perret had defeated him on a decision to regain the title last September and tonight at 2.09 of the 12th round, referee Ruby Goldstein stopped the bout and uh, Emil Griffith is the new welterweight champion. The weights were Griffith 144, Perret 146 and a quarter. The limit, of course, is 147. I want to say to the, that the bout will be shown in the Virgin Islands on delayed videotape. You know, Griffith was born in the Virgin Islands, but now he lives in New York City, as does Benny Kid Perret, who was born in Cuba, but who is about to become an American citizen. Yeah. Griffith uh, built up an early lead, and then Perret almost won the fight by a knockout near the end of the sixth round, but time ran out on him there, and uh, it was a pretty close battle until the 10th, which Griffith won by a big margin, then the 11th, and he came on to knock out Perrette, the referee stopping the bout at 2.09 of the 12th round. I'd just like to remind you folks of uh, some of our scheduled bouts in the future. Next week, it's Dick Tiger and Henry Hank, 10 rounds here in Madison Square Garden. Following week, April 7th in Boston, the uh, New York, Massachusetts, and European version of the middleweight title will be at stake. Terry Downs defending against Paul Pender with Boston blacked out. And on April 21st in Las Vegas, Joe Brown will in Las Vegas, Joe Brown will defend the lightweight crown against Carlos Ortiz. Be at television ringside next Saturday night and enjoy the 10-round middleweight match between Dick Tiger and Henry Hank from Madison Square Garden on the Fight of the Week. Produced by U Beach, directed by Marshall Diskin, associate director Bill Lilling, technical director Lou Marchand. Due to the length of tonight's fight, make that spare with Win Elliott will not be seen tonight. Tune in next week when Bill Lillard will meet Joe Donato on Make That Spare. Until next Saturday, this is Don Dunphy saying good night for your hosts, the Gillette Safety Razor Company, makers of the 195 Adjustable Razor, Super Blue Blades, Foamy Shaving Cream, and Right Guard Power Spray Deodorant. And El Producto, America's largest selling quality cigar. A cigar 